up today an inspiring immigrant story of success and social responsibility welcome to chai with manjula when future generations look back at pioneers who paved the way for a flurry of indo american entrepreneurs ceos and vcs who went on to nurture a whole generation of young entrepreneurs and who gave back generously in the US as well as in India as their prime responsibility our guest will certainly be among those at the top of the list forbes magazine called him a sage to silicon valley's indian community while others have simply called him the godfather today we'll find out some facts and myths about his intriguing story the guest is kanwal reki Kanwal, it's so good to have you here. Uh, you came from India in 1967 with eight dollars in your pocket. That's all you could bring those yeah, days. That's that all yeah, that yeah. was allowed. So you came as a graduate student. What was your American dream at the time? What did success mean to you? What was you your know, vision? It, it clearly was not that ambitious. Yeah, the ambition yeah, was at least my ambition was to yeah, become a damn good engineer. Uh-huh. Yeah, especially back then, you know, the computers were just starting. Right. And and uh, you know, I wanted to work in, on the computers and see if I could be one of the engineers. Uh-huh. When you leave India, you're, you're coming out of IIT. Uh-huh. You, you think you're very good and you want to do the latest stuff. Uh-huh. And the you know, latest stuff back then was was the computers. Okay, so, uh, so there, there wasn't much thought beyond that one, you know, really. Okay, so a good job is what you were looking good for. Good job, yeah, yeah, do some good, interesting work, yeah, uh-huh. and yeah, get, get some good education. Okay, so yeah. you went to Michigan Tech and yeah. had a master's degree over there? Yeah. Okay, now 20 years later, you were named Entrepreneur of the Year by the Arthur Young Venture Magazine mm-hmm. when Excellent, the company that you had co-founded, went public. And it was at a time when an Indian entrepreneur was a rare phenomenon. Mm-hmm. And two years later, the company got uh, acquired by Novell. And you went on to be on the board of a billion dollar plus company. Mm-hmm. How did that happen? Uh, what led you to start Excellent? What were you doing before that? And when did you start Excellent? You know, it, so I started working in 1969. I see. You know, at just when the economy was heading south. I see. And I got my first job in 69, I got laid off you know, within six months. Second job, I got laid off uh, within six months. Oh. And third job, I got laid off in seven months. I see. And so I went to three jobs in two years. And it was a very unsettling, you know, it was a very unsettling experience, you know. And none of my other friends got laid off, you know, the, the, the ones who went to work for big companies like IBM and Texas Instrument. I see. So it started to, you know, open up my eyes, you know, about the, about the, Jobs, especially you know, jobs are not, you know, something forever. Mm-hmm. So I told myself, uh, nobody, nobody will ever leave me off again. Yeah, that happened back in you know, 71, 72. And also, became very aware that uh, I had become by that time, you know, very, very hardcore, you know, design engineer. Mm-hmm. You know, probably was not a smart thing to do. So my second role was to become a much broader person. I see. Much broader than you know, just a hardware engineer. Mm-hmm. And so. It, Immediate uh, thing was to learn more about software. I see. And then also start to learn about the business sides of it, marketing, mm-hmm. you know, selling, you know, finance, and even legal side. So I spent six years to broaden my horizon. Mm-hmm. So by late 70s, you know, I was becoming very confident you know, that I was very good. Mm-hmm. You know. uh-huh. So when did you start Excellent? Well, we started in 1982. 82. Okay. Well, that's, the, that's when the actual company was launched by three of us, you know, myself, Naveen Jain, and Indra Mohan Singh. Okay. And, uh, but the thought of you know, doing the company started to you know, get in my head around 1980. Huh? So two years of thinking and preparing myself mentally, 
yeah, before we actually jumped in. Okay, yeah. so uh, after three layoffs, you yeah. realized you want to take a different path and you started Excellent. Mm -hmm. And it was four years later then, or five years later, that it got, uh, it went public and then later yeah, got acquired. Well, so what was the prime reason for your success? Well, you know, yeah, you can always say, you know, the hard work, but hard work is never enough, right? right. Yeah, you, need, you need lucky breaks. Mm -hmm. And uh, so, so we, you know, we got into this new field which was just emerging, uh, okay. the computer networking. Mm -hmm. yeah, there was nobody in the field ahead of us. Oh. Field okay. was wide open, and uh, you know, we pioneered new way of doing things, new, new thinking. Yeah, and uh, we got some lucky breaks because nobody else followed uh -huh. those, those paths. And uh, we ended up having a you know, two, three years jump on the marketplace. Okay. Yeah. So it was hard work, lucky yeah. breaks, yeah. and a new path that yeah. you found. Yeah. So that was 1989 or so. But last 20 years, you have established yourself as a mentor, a guru, yeah. to a whole generation of tech entrepreneurs. You have been a visionary leader, a co-founder also of Thai, two-term president there in the late 90s. And you have been, you have also made your mark as a philanthropist. You have given a large sum of money to Michigan Tech, your alma mater. You have given $5 million to that school and $5 million to IIT Mumbai, your alma mater in uh, India. And you have helped raise hundreds of millions for both the institutions. And of course, there's a, a school of uh, information technology named after you at both the campuses. And you have also given two million to Stanford University for a program related to Indian economy. You have committed five million to Foundation for Excellence for Women's Education, and the list goes on and on. So how did this process start? And obviously, there's a focus here on education. Why was education, giving to education, so important to you? Well, in our family, right, my father was the first one to go to high school. We are you know, from a village in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. And my father was one of the first. You know, there, there, was, there were several brothers in the family and in, in that whole line to become high school graduate. And that transformed his life. Uh, he was able to do, join the army, and and eventually became an officer. I see. And so he had a huge emphasis on education because he saw the you know, the difference that even the high school education back then made. Mm -hmm. And so you know, so there was a lot of uh, yeah, emphasis on education at home. And of course, in my own case, won the lottery of at JEE, you know, that joint entrance exam of IIT. Okay. So I got into IIT. And the, everything which happened to me later was driven by, from that. You know, I, you know, being at IIT, you know, in the company of the smartest students, you know, very you know, smart professors, you know, mm -hmm. a lot of pressure you know, to mm -hmm. compete. You know, uh, just to hold your own at IIT was hard because right. everybody around you was a class topper, right? Mm -hmm. And uh, so, and so I, I always have you know, felt, in terms of India especially, you know, there mm -hmm. hasn't been, a, you know, at the government level for 40, 50 years, yeah, emphasis on education. You know, they built five IITs. Right. Yeah, there was need for 500 of them. Right. right. And uh, the, you know, even at this late stage, you know, you still that about 30 to 40 percent of the students are still not going to school in India. Yeah. You, know, you can tie stuff down and see. You know, 20 years mm -hmm. from now, you know, they will still have problems. Uh -huh. So you know, you can solve all the problems, but uh, you know, the role was to you know do your bit, you pay back. Mm -hmm. You have often said that this is your payback. Oh, yeah. you, know, you don't yeah. consider it charity. You call it your payback. No, no, it's, it's not a charity. It's not a charity mm -hmm. because uh, I am where I am because uh, yeah, that IIT education. Okay, and so I, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. education played an important role yeah. in your success and your yeah. uh, life. So yeah. you thought of investing back in education. Education, yeah. And it's not that you have only given money. You have also given your time and skills mm -hmm. as a mentor at Thai. Tell us, how did you get started with uh, Thai? What kind of mentoring did you do, and yeah. what so, impact did it have? Well, you know, I didn't have any mentors. I, I didn't have any mentors. You know, as a matter of fact, uh, throughout uh, that period, you know, when we were doing the startup, there was nobody to talk to. There was nobody to get advice from. Uh -huh. And uh, you know, by and large, the Indians by that time had been tight-pressed as uh, very good tatties. There was a sense that Indians uh, 
are smart in mathematics and and they know how to write software and they know how to design. <laughs> right, and, right. and you know, and, and we had built a reputation and, and sort of branding around that, but nobody believed that you know, it would sell, it would market, it would you know, ma manage uh, money, mm -hmm. you know, you know, it would manage people. And uh, as a matter of fact, there was a sense that we couldn't, you know, because right, we, right. we we are the nerds, you know, who stay in the bat, right? Yeah. So so when. We started to become entrepreneurs. It was very hard mm -hmm. to convince people that you know, that we are doing the right thing, and uh, you know, eventually, you know, we did get the money. But even then, you know, the the, the sense was that oh yeah, these guys will start and we'll bring the CEO in, uh -huh. and uh, and uh, we'll see what happens. So every step of the way, you know, you had to fight, you had to fight to prove you know, yourself. You know, you had to be twice as good, you know, mm -hmm. to just be you know, treated as, as equal, and. So, so by, by the time I was done, you know, uh, I didn't realize that when I was finished that, you know, that my achievements were th that great because I thought, you know, I was doing you know, as well as uh, uh, my peers were doing. Uh -huh. And it was only at uh, doing, you know, when I started to engage with, with the Thai that I realized that, you know, my achievements uh, had stood out, you know, for, in many people's eyes. Uh -huh. And, uh, you know, people wanted to come and talk to me. Okay. And so it wasn't that something I plan to do, you know, people right, want to talk right. to me, and I it said, just happened. Yeah. And, and I would listen to their stories, and I, I will, you know, just in my opinion, it was a sort of free session, you know. Okay, that was late in the 90s. How many uh, uh, entrepreneurs a day did you talk to? Well, How so, many so it started in 1995, uh -huh. you know, when I, you know, I took a year off. Yeah, that was the plan, I will take a year off, and, and okay. before I do something else. Uh -huh. Yeah, that year, you know, was the the year of uh, I just died coming of age. You know, we had the office here in, in Santa Clara, mm -hmm. and initially, you know, somebody would stop by, then two or three people would stop by a day. You know, it, it was oh. it was totally unplanned, unstructured. Okay. And you know, before I knew, you know, there were four, five, six, seven people, you know, scheduling with me to come come by every day. Every day, and you know, I think by now the number must be in, you know, thousands. You know, because for Couple of years, I had a full-time assistant scheduling me. I was paying her, you know, to manage my time, and you know, uh, you know so she was scheduling me, you know, six, seven, eight you know, people a day. So it went on for a few years yeah. at Thai. Yeah, and yeah, and then of course I would do, you know, travel to India and hold the workshops there for three days, four days, you know, in Delhi, and then two, three days in in Bangalore, and people will line up over there to your mentoring. Over there, yeah, yeah. And so, you know, I enjoyed it. I enjoyed it. Just, I, I don't want to say that it was a one-way street. Okay. Because it, yeah. uh -huh. the, the funny part about mentoring is uh, you learn more than you teach. Okay, that's yeah, good. Yeah, which is uh, uh -huh. you know, very counterintuitive uh -huh. because, you know, younger people have a new thinking. Yeah, they have right. a new thinking, right? Uh -huh. you know, they, you know, they are more up to snuff on the technology. I see. You, know, you can't keep up with the technology, uh -huh. but it's rapidly move, you know, changing. Yeah, and they are closer to the customer's markets, right? So, so you know, so when they come to you for advice, you know, they're looking for a, for a different, you know, they're not looking really for advice but on the technology or the marketplace, mm -hmm. you know, they're looking for, you know, on the business aspects of it. Mm -hmm. And so, so I very quickly realized that, you know, the young person, you know, with his energy, you know, with the, his curiosity, with his knowledge of technology and marketplace, and the, and the older person like me with, with the more of a wisdom, you mm -hmm. know, experience, this harsh sense of business, I see. and uh, there may be some connections. You put them together, and it's a very potent bit. Okay. You, know, you can you know, improve his arts by you know, two to three percent, and you made all the difference. So, as a result of your mentoring, what kind of success stories did you hear about? Well, yeah, the most obvious one everybody knows about Chandrasekhar, right? Okay, Chandrasekhar. Chandrasekhar and uh -huh. Exodus, yeah, is the cyber media and only warrior there. Uh -huh. The ambit design you know, with the uh, Rajiv Madhavan. I see. Purna Parit at, uh, uh -huh. at Activity. At the, you know, you know, I did 53 direct investments. I see. Yeah, 53 direct investments uh, uh -huh. you know, in addition to thousands of, of uh, uh, mentoring. You know, yeah, you became an angel investor yeah. also. Yeah, which, which was part of the same mentoring right, part right, because right. You, know, you like the person, but he won't get the funding. Mm -hmm. Right, right. He won't get the funding and say, why don't we you know, do it ourselves? Yeah, but the Part which uh, I still feel very good about is I get emails, uh -huh. you know, from you know, and they come on a very regular basis. You know, from somebody somewhere, 
yeah, I said might have been just a pride or might have been just one public. Or, okay. Yeah. And yeah, I just wanted to you know, let you know and thank you for that session that I had with you. What a great feeling. Yeah. And as president of Thai, two-term president of Thai, you were very active. And of course, you were instrumental in globalizing Thai. Mm -hmm. So uh, tell us a little bit about that. How did that help? And another thing I remember is that you were... Uh, you played a key role in forcing some uh, reforms in India, mm -hmm. uh, in yeah. policy reforms yeah. in India. And in fact, you became such a problem for the Indian government that they were calling you leader of the opposition party <laughs> living in America. Yeah. So uh, tell us about your role as president, uh, about globalizing yeah. and uh, the policy reforms in India. But, so, so the Thai phenomena you know, self-globalized, by the way, you know, the okay. such, such of... of uh, what we're doing here, you know, the phenomena, the people watched from other places. You know, there was a lot of press coverage, mm -hmm. and they would turn and say, "Can we do this thing too?" And our mm -hmm. answer was, "Sure." You know, it's a simple recipe. You know, and I just mentioned, we take the experience and mm -hmm. and, and uh, people and put them in you know, in touch with the younger people, and you have a you know, very potent mix. And uh, there's nothing that we are doing here which is you know, mm -hmm. you know, secret or unique or proprietary. Mm -hmm. So the chapter in Boston was very quickly formed and very quickly started to prove successful in uh -huh. chapter in Los Angeles. The chapters in India uh, happened the same way. You know, people you know, like Saurabh Srinivasava from Delhi came uh -huh. okay. and hey, why don't we do this in Delhi also? Mm -hmm. And so this chapter uh, formation was all very sort of loose you know, There was no organization at mm -hmm. time which was you know, doing this thing happen, you know, making this thing happen. Somebody wanted to do the Thai okay. chapter, yeah, here's our brand name, here's our recipe book, here's, here's what we do, here, okay. here are the bylaws we have used. Uh -huh. And each of these became you know, you know, its own organization. You know, I and, see. Yeah, so we formed about 30, 40 chapters like that outside of Silicon Valley. Right so, now, I think you have about 52 chapters. Yeah. yeah. We are not talking much about Thai because yeah. I have already done a show about yeah. Thai, so our <laughs> audience knows they can uh, go on our website and watch yeah. the show. Thai is an organization that fosters entrepreneurship. Yeah. yeah. The point I was making, that was it, it wasn't something that we were driving, or I was driving, it was okay. being, we were being pulled. Things were, uh, yeah, you yeah. were going with the flow. Yeah, we were going with the flow. And... So as, you know, I started to travel, you know, with Thai, and I saw, saw the excitement, you know, engagement with India happened, you know, only because uh, the chapters not formed in, you know, Delhi and Mumbai, and I saw these entrepreneurs who were very sharp, as sharp as any, anybody anywhere. Mm -hmm. This is the, the IT entrepreneurs in India. And uh, then, you know, the Prime Minister Vaspay, in one of his speeches, talked about, you know, IT is India's future. I see. IT, you know, stands for India's tomorrow. Okay. Yeah, you know, that was the you know, mm -hmm. word he used. You know. mm -hmm. And then, you know, that you know, said, mm, yeah, if he means that, you know, then maybe I should engage with him. <laughs> because uh, to be an IT power, you need a you know, phone network, you know, the determination network, which has to be really you know, modern. India's uh, telephone network was really third world, you know, really treaty, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, turning into 90s. This is now 1998, you know, 17 million phones in a country of a billion people okay. and less than a million cell phones. Uh -huh. And you know, to get a telephone data line, you, know, you have to wait for two years. You, you know, and the data lines were slow. And you know, so these Indian entrepreneurs were you know, doing miracles. You know. So I went to see Prime Minister and I talked to him, you know, if you mean IT is India's tomorrow, then, uh, then uh, you, know, you need to fix the telephone network. Okay. And uh, I saw told him about the venture capital, you know, you need to allow the venture capital to happen so entrepreneurs can, you know, you know get funded. Okay. So, you know, so engagement happened because of that, you know, and Vajpayee was very, very, uh -huh. you know, receptive, very receptive. Mm -hmm. And uh, and so I, every time I went to India, I went to see him. Okay. And, you know, so, you know, that whole tariff, you know, so we, we, we spent a huge amount of energy to make the, you know, tariff, tariff time thing happen because you know, I got Stanford involved. Yeah, and okay. uh, we did lots of seminars at Stanford to educate the Indians. So to two areas, basically, telecommunications and venture, venture capital yeah. uh, investment yeah. in India. Yeah. yeah, they made a huge impact mm -hmm. there. And uh, so you have led a remarkable life of mm -hmm. extraordinary success, giving back, mm -hmm. and you have a great family life. You have uh, brothers and sisters here. You've helped them settle down here. And you are a patriarchal figure to a whole Reiki clan here in the Bay Area. 
How many uh, family members do you have? Here? Well, so, so we are six brothers and a sister here. Okay. Uh, and then, of course, you know, there are 16 you know, kids in the next generation, including two of mine. Okay, yeah, yeah. So, so about uh, 30 people. Uh, well, yeah. <laughs> uh, so I also have my brother, my wife's brother here. And so you know, now it's, the next generation is forming after that one, you know, the kids are getting married. So I think the number is about over 40. But that's amazing. You continue to play a very important role, a fatherly role, yeah. even yeah. in the next generation's uh, life oh. also. The children, you are involved with your nephews and yeah. nieces also. How do you manage yeah. that? Yeah. What advice would you give to a struggling entrepreneur now yeah. who is trying to strike a balance between family and career? I mean, I, I never sacrifice my life for business. Yeah. You know, you know, see, I have a very simple you know, view of the world. You know, you need uh, education. You know, I, and this is what I tell almost all my nephews and nieces. You know, number one priority in your life has to be your education. Uh -huh. you, know, you, you need that to stay sharp. Number uh -huh. two priority in your life has to be your health. You know, without the health, you, know, you, know, you can't do anything. And number three priority in your life has to be your family. Okay, so education, yeah. health, and, and family. family. It's uh, your yeah, been sharp mentally, you know, it's uh, been healthy physically, and it's been emotionally stable. You know, the family provides you that. I see. Yeah. So what keeps you busy now? What are you up to? No, I'm very busy. In my test now, number one priority you know, is health, right? Okay. So, so I do my daily bicycling or mm -hmm. weekly hikes or you know, gym work. I, so I do something every day. Something I see. Every day. I see. And, uh, yeah, I still work with the entrepreneurs through Thai and uh, by, and third, you know, we have a small venture capital fund now. Mm -hmm. You know, just to it's called Inventus, uh, right? In, Inventus chapter. Uh -huh. Yeah, you know, uh, just to you know, stay more structured. You know, in my life, you know, okay. you know Inventus chapter again is me and three younger people. Uh -huh. you, know, you know, who are very sharp and uh, between four of us, you know, we are helping younger entrepreneurs. Mm -hmm. So these three guys basically. Are learning you know, my way of doing things. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, we we have approached venture capital from a different perspective than than you know, most venture guys do. Okay. So it's, it's the same. You know, you mentor people. I see. You know, you know, and then you know the ones who are very good. You know, you put money on them. Mm -hmm. uh, there is so much written about you. So much said about you. What's the biggest myth about Kanwal Rekhi? Uh, yeah, or is there something that people still don't know about you? Yeah. I don't know if there's a myth about me. Yeah. When they, people call you the godfather, yeah, the yeah, king yeah, of the Indian yeah, mafia, yeah, and yeah, Don Rickey. Yeah, yeah, the funny part is yeah, I am a very private person. I'm not a public person at all. I see. Yeah, I think I'm a pretty ordinary person. Yeah, the, no, no. Being I, I, no, no, I'm just going to say that yeah, the humble. one thing which I have never forgotten you know, is the humble beginning. You know, yes, I have stayed very drawn you know, I have never... You know, I have never detached myself you know, from from the you know, the crowd, or the people I was with from start. That's a beautiful. Yeah, part. and uh, yeah. so you know, I tell people, you know, as soon as you do that, uh, as soon as you detach yourself, you know, mm -hmm. you know, that's the beginning of the end. You know. I see. When I was uh, doing the search on you last week, I found something that I never knew, and many people may not <laughs> know about you, that uh, you are quite a romantic. I found out that your wife Anne, you know, you've been married for about 40 years now. Mm -hmm. She used to be your pen pal when you were a student <laughs> in Bombay. Oh, I didn't yeah. mean to embarrass yeah. you, but yeah. I found that very interesting and I didn't know that uh, if people even knew about that. Yeah, but I, Anne was my pen pal yeah, before I left India. Okay. And uh, yeah, because there was this Parker pen, yeah, yeah, pavilion at the New York World Fair. I see. In 1965, you know, they had uh, this, you know, they had this campaign to match people up worldwide I see. as pen pals. Uh -huh. So when I got here, you know, I you know, started to write to her, and you know, yeah, she she was an interesting person. You know, she you know, she would you know try to tease me by you know, sending some teasers. You know, I see. Yeah, you know, you know, and uh, yeah. Wow. So so we we had two years of uh, almost three years of uh, of yeah. You know, a romance by letters, and then, then we That's met. It. I found something. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you have inspired so many people in your life. Who was your biggest inspiration? Your well, hero. You know, I, I, you know, when I look back, you know, I, I probably was my grandfather. You know, and uh, mm -hmm. again, you know, my grandfather 
was very ordinary person, very ordinary person. And uh, he was uh, paralyzed. You know, he was paralyzed. Uh, initially, he was paralyzed on one side. I see. And he would you know, be able to walk and drag the other side along. And then, then he was paralyzed on the other side also. And he was you know, sort of bedridden for the last two, two years of his life. And so he's the one who taught me how to play chess and how to play cards and, I see. and you know, how to uh-huh. you know, do all sorts of you know, tricks. And uh, you know, I used to look at him and uh, you know, sort of marvel that you know, he never lost his spirit even though he was paralyzed, you know, and he, he was able to take everything in stride. Okay. And uh, so, you know, so that was uh, one of the inspirations okay. that... Uh, so it know. was your grandfather. Yeah. You've been fortunate enough to help so many in your mm-hmm. life. You have given uh, to schools and given a mm-hmm. gift of education. You know, this is a gift that mm-hmm. will keep giving for generations. How does it make you feel? People say you can't give to another without helping yourself. Uh, there's a greater pleasure in giving than in receiving. What has it done for your soul? Well, yeah, you know, I'm a sick, right? Yeah, you know, and yeah, you know, there's, a, there's a concept of seva. In, 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 in Sikhism. In Sikhism. Yeah. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, as a matter of fact, you know, the, there's edict that, you know, that you will do the seva, you know, and uh, giving money is not enough, you know. Mm-hmm. My father used to hold uh, Free lunders once a month, which is uh, yeah at, a, at our house. Meal. Yeah, mm-hmm. meal, free meal. Free meal. Yeah, at home. Yeah, and where we will open up to even all the badgers on the street will come and we will serve. You know, so 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 there was a tradition of, of that in the family. Okay. Uh, yeah, and uh, but but if you are sick, you know, there's almost a requirement. You know that you you mm-hmm. give back to the community. You know. The, you know, the, the word payback comes from that, you know, that thing. Too. Okay, yeah. so it was a family tradition yeah. in yeah, your family, case. Yeah. I see. Well, on yeah. that note, I thank you, Kanmul, so much for coming by. It was a great pleasure to have you here, and I really appreciate you My taking pleasure. the time. Okay. Well, that's all we have for you today. In case you joined us late, our guest was Kanwal Rekhi, a highly respected name as a pioneer entrepreneur and VC, a visionary leader of Thai who mentored a whole generation of entrepreneurs and a philanthropist who has given back generously to society and invested prudently into its future. An inspiring example of what a difference one person can make. You may watch this show at our website, chaiwithmanjula.org. Thank you all for joining us. I'll be back with another inspiring story about giving and people making a difference. For Chai with Manjula, I'm Manjula Gupta. See you next time.